call this meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Please remain standing for a moment of silent prayer for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all of those who have passed away in our community. Roll call, please. Mr. Perry. Here. Mr. Donahue? Here. Mr. Evans? Here. Mr. Gaughan? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Please dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third order, 3A, Tax Assessor's Results Report, for hearing date held May 1, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, check received from Comcast in the amount of $257,276.94 for quarterly franchise fee. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, City of Scranton's renewal application package for MPDES MS4 permit. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, minutes of the Civil Service Commission meeting held April 4, 2019. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, minutes of the Historical Architecture Review Board meeting held April 11, 2019. Any comments? Received and filed. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Uh, yeah, I have one quick one. Um, the U.S. Census Bureau is uh, beginning to start higher census takers. Uh, so if anyone's interested, you could apply online at 2020census.gov backslash jobs. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, I have two, two announcements. Uh, once again, I would like to mention that the Scranton uh, Police Department and the FOP Auxiliary will hold their fourth annual breakfast fundraiser this Friday, May 17th, from 6.30 a.m. until noon at the trolley located in the Hilton Scranton Hotel. The fundraiser supports the police department's uh, team for the Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Purple Stride event. The price is $10 per person and covers all of your food and beverages. Tickets are available at police headquarters or by calling 570-348. 4130. Tickets will also be available at the door on Friday morning. And secondly, the Armed Forces Day Parade will be held this Saturday, May 18th at 11 a.m. The parade begins at the Veterans Center and travels up Mulberry Street, turning onto North Washington, Lackawanna Avenue, and ends at the Intermortal Center just past the Marketplace at Steamtown. Uh, please be aware of road closures on that Saturday, and I encourage everyone to attend the parade to show their support and honor uh, for members of our military. I have a couple announcements. A sewer main replacement project is scheduled to begin this week along Green Ridge Street and Gardner Avenue. Contractors will be working on Green Ridge uh, between Dixon and Gardner Avenues between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. The project is expected to be completed by mid-July. Traffic restrictions will be in place during construction and paving will take place in the fall. Uh, questions may be directed to PA American Waters Customer Service Center at 1-800 five six five seven two nine two and finally um actually two more next monday may 20th at 5 30 p.m a public hearing will be held for item 5b on tonight's agenda a liquor license transfer to giant food stores for use at 1600 naog avenue and finally we do have some students from scranton prep here tonight so we'd like to welcome them to our meeting i uh, hope you enjoy it Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker tonight is Joan Hodewanitz. Uh, Joan Hodewanitz, city resident and taxpayer. Um, first for TV land, I wanna remind everybody that one week from tomorrow, May 21st is our primary elections. And I attended the uh, debate uh, for city council and found out that there are no Republicans running, so since it's only a Democrat slate, the election for the city councilman is actually next week. So whoever wins the primary is in fact going to become our next councilman. Am I correct? Barring well, write-in on, on the Well, barring write-in votes, but don't disappoint yourself. If you want your vote to count, you better vote in this primary. Uh, also for TV Land and for you, 
Just want to remind you that on Friday, May 24th, is the 10th annual Swinging on Vine benefit for the Scranton Public Library. And we do this every year. It's uh, outdoors in front of the library. Rain or shine, there will be tents. There will be a live band. Uh, there will be beer and wine and margaritas and raffle tickets and uh, finger food and lots and lots of sweets and desserts. And the live band is picture perfect. Now, the price is uh, this from 5 to 8 p.m. The price is $20 if you buy the ticket in advance and $25 at the door. You can get the tickets at the Albright Memorial Library, Library Express, or the Nancy K. Holmes branch in Green Ridge. And I'll give this to Kathy. You can each have your own. But Wayne, you and I can go and get as drunk as we want in low crawl home. That, that's no right, John. Good, good point. So good I'll point. see you there. All right, I'll be there. Um, I saw on the, uh, the legals today a very interesting legal, City of Scranton Adaptive Reuse of City Hall. I don't understand what an adaptive reuse. Does this mean that the administration is pondering selling this building? No. Actually, that was my request. I want to see if there's anything out there, because I really don't think there is. Okay. That makes any sense, and then we can move beyond that kind of conversation. And okay, get because yeah. I, I saw that and I said, what is this all about? So I'm glad you cleared that yeah. up. Uh, I'm also grateful to the Scranton Times for their really informative article yesterday about Scranton's tax burden. Uh, there we are with the medium income for individual workers of $24,311. That's not a living wage on which to raise a family. And a total tax burden per $1,000 of uh, earned income of $137.65. Um, and then you wonder why people are hesitant about coming into Scranton, either people or businesses. We've got to change that dynamic. We need higher wages and lower taxes, and the sooner the better. Um, which brings me to my next issue, rental registration, and the uh, recent article that was there, and why LIPS is having such a hard time. They're understaffed and don't have the personnel uh, to work on delinquent fees. Perhaps you and the administration can have a conversation this year. If we start hiring more people, I don't think we need more confidential secretaries and administrative staff. We need worker bees, especially up in the LIPS department. And I think every penny spent on their salary and benefits will come back to the city tenfold, because right now, the tax cheats are getting away with murder, and I, for one, am fed up with it. Let's try to get that fixed. And um, again, um, I put a right to know request in. I, I hope I get it. It's, I'm on the 30-day hold. I want an, a list of all municipal employees who are delinquent in either their property or garbage taxes and let's see if we get it, because we should have no city employees who are delinquent who have not gone on to a payment plan. And thank you. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Our next speaker is Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Uh, I know it was in the paper, and some of you have said it up there, and some of you are interested in putting the garbage fee in with our property taxes. If that's the case, we're going to get screwed again. You won't go after the people that are delinquent, and you want to screw over the majority of taxpayers that are paying their taxes. If, uh, if we uh, put the fee in with our property tax, we're also going to lose our chance to get a discount. So why do you think, why does anybody think that would be a good idea to put it in with our property taxes? And as I said, our property taxes are supposed to be paying for a garbage pickup anyway. The fee is illegal. It shouldn't be put in with a garbage, with the property taxes. 
And can anybody answer that question? How will we, are, how will we get our discount if it's put in with the property taxes? That's all bundled into one price. So how do we get our disc? We, we'll lose our discount. So you're just looking to screw the taxpayers over. We're not at that point yet. That's just a conversation we're having to talk about. Well, what, I think it's a terrible idea. Well, that, that's good. They have and all of you up there, when you ran for office, you said, oh, well, I want to do something about the garbage fee. And nothing has been done. I've been coming here for 17 years, and nothing has been done. So uh, as uh, Joan said, next week is Election Day. Hope the people are listening and put somebody in there that maybe will hold to their comments, and then they'll be truthful and do something about the garbage fee and help out the taxpayers of the city. That's all I have on that subject now. Uh, I'm sure everybody heard about the shooting outside the castle when they, after hours club the other night. I'm asking council to send a letter to the DA Powell and shut that place down. The, the neighbors are saying there's trouble there every weekend and now somebody's dead because of that place. There's no reason to have an after hours club. It's ridiculous. Nothing good happens at five o'clock in the morning and that just proves it. Rockies was shut down for six months because of shootings around there, but nobody was killed. Now a life was lost. So I hope you listen and send a letter to the DA asking them to shut that place down for good. Because I think it was shut down once and they opened it up again. It's ridiculous to have a place open that later and with, there's violence there every week, the neighbors are saying. So that's all I have tonight, thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Bob Bolas. Evening, Council. Bob Ball of Scranton. First off, I think we need to start with a couple issues here that I've been watching, haven't been here, but it's been turning my stomach. First, you want to take the garbage fee, which is a fee, and turn it into a tax, which is absurd. Second part of the garbage fee, nobody knows what the hell it's costing us, how much money we're spending, and nobody even knows where the money's going. Remember, when this thing went into place, our costs were way up here. Our costs have dropped way down. Fuel everything else. Why are we still paying the same fee and the same amount to dump our garbage? But nobody's fighting it. Nobody's looking into it. We're playing the game of the good old boy club. And that's what's killing this city, for one, because we're not paying attention to the cost. Cost runs everything. So you want to turn that into a tax, then you better go after the university and everybody else, because if you allow that fee to turn into a tax, then you could tax everybody else. They're not exempt. So you're looking for a hell of a lot of litigation. Just to give you a heads up. So if you're gonna play games, play on a solid footing. Don't play the game on a piece of loose ice because it's gonna draw on every one of us. Mr. Evans, thank you for uh, getting me the information on the original parking garage. If nobody's aware, I asked uh, Mr. Evans and Mr. Gauhan back then, and he pushed it over to Mr. Evans to uh, get us the original contract between Basiliga and the city of Scranton as to what we were paying and what we were getting for those 500 parking spaces. And that's where I want to start from. Not where we are now, what they passed on, that has no bearing on it. It's what we gave them the money for. And if we can't have what we gave them the money for, then I want the four and a half million bucks back. Okay, no more games. That's where we're killing this city. The uh, issue, and I have one more, Mr. Gohan, and don't take it personal, but since you championed the ethics, Pat Hitton should not in any way, shape, or form get that building at Naog Park. No way in heck should he get that building because he violated ethics beforehand, before he even put up the new charge. He broke the law, he had no business buying it, he had no business doing what he's doing. You have to sit and negate that deal. Talk to your solicitor. That deal's gotta end and put it out publicly and not this game we're playing around here. Pat Hinton could shut people down, he could play everything he wants in violations and nobody says a darn thing about him. But yet you're giving him something 
that he knew was illegal to do. And the law is the law. It's for everyone, including him and this council and this city. And that's where you guys got to go to. If you're going to start running this city, then let's run the city the way it needs to be run. One of the things uh, that's really upset me, uh, this guy Singer deal. How does somebody take an asset, do a one, one day deal, that take $10,000 and say, well, they're gonna put in lights and do this, when you could make perpetual money for, uh, at least she's on the ball anyhow, she gets news from all over the world. But you should be getting, we should put our own lights in, we should charge them a fee, no more than parking in downtown Scranton, and it's perpetual. You're bringing money in every single day. A one-time bite is stupid. It's the dumbest business thing I've seen, and I've been in business 57 years. If any of my employees did that, I would have fired them on the spot. That's total incompetence. When you take an asset that could generate money, and the authority doesn't own the land, we do in the city, we the people. They're only there, and if they're that stupid and incompetent, they shouldn't be doing their job. Now, if they think I'm insulting them, they could bet the hell I am, because we're paying the price of incompetence throughout this whole damn deal with the city. So that deal should be negated. Let them do it normally. We'll put in the lights. Here's the fee. You park just like you are downtown Scranton. It shouldn't be anything different, and that's going to go on for the next 10, 15 years. The cash registers are going to ring. You do it one time in this city, you blow it. If it lasts even long enough to get into the city with the incompetence that we've had running around here. So that's something I'd like you guys to start looking into, and I'm at directing it to all five people. I haven't heard anybody say anything about it. I've been watching it, and I said, time to go. One more thing I do have, and it's not something I'm really happy about, Mr. Rogan. This is Commissioner Cummins. We're all talking about reassessment. I have properties all over the bloody place, not just in this county. I have them all over the country. And I'm dealing with reassessment everywhere, Florida, Ohio, Texas. I'm dealing with them everywhere. To gather information is the most important thing we could do for all of us. No one here knows whether reassessment's a good idea, a bad idea, but I bought the Holy Cross Church here in Lackawanna County. It was worth a dollar to the city. They were gonna tear it down. I paid $35,000 for it. I owe 45,000 in taxes. Do I want reassessment? Do I want somebody to come in here and straighten this county out? Get, good at the, get rid of the good old boy club because that's the dumbest thing they could do to me? I saved history. Thank you, Mr. Bowles. In this city. But to chastise Commissioner Cummins, you guys can go to our meetings. I haven't seen any of the commissioner meeting. I haven't seen you raise issues. Collectively, between you, the school board, and the commissioners, you run our cities. You run our counties. And guess what? You're putting our futures in jeopardy if you keep this in fighting. And I think you owe a damn apology. Thank you. Thank you. Ron Elman. Hello, Council. I'm not mad at anybody up there tonight, so you can relax. I, I personally, I can't comprehend how uh, that the paper could print this despicable dribble about this commercial against uh, Mrs. Cummings by Bob Harper. He's just another political wannabe to, to me. And I don't know, maybe it's me, but I couldn't see any humor in, in, in this, this attack commercial. This woman's probably forgot more than Bob Harper will ever know in the rest of his life. Yeah, and while I'm on the subject, I, I just can't see how Mrs. Dominic can brag about her other two positions and want to 
represent the people with Mr. O'Malley, nobody wants to explain it to me. And no, and she, they don't mention it. You're talking about two full-time positions already that she, she uh, is responsible for. There's, I wouldn't vote for her. Not, to, not under these circumstances, because what the city doesn't need is another part-timer like this. And don't think I haven't found some fault with, with some of the results from these people. I don't agree with a lot they've done. Real quick, last week, about five in the morning, I was going up Green Ridge, and I saw a big box truck turn on to Jefferson, like the letter in the paper complained about, and it seemed it would be so easy for Dunmore to make Jefferson a one-way street into Green Ridge, it would be on the GPS and alleviate that, but... Uh, this, this truck, these, these trucks don't belong in a residential neighborhood. For some reason, the last year or so, my neighborhood's full of tractors people bring home that park everywhere. It, they cause some terrible traffic uh, problems where you can't see around them. Now to change the subject a little bit. I might be a lot of things, but I'm a good patriotic American. And I was honorably discharged from the Air Force. And I don't know how many people saw or read this article about the Muslim Society video of the, the little children singing to cut off the Jewish heads and kill and maim and so forth. I saw it twice. And the Cretan, the human dung that's responsible for this, he's probably set Muslim relations back hundreds of years. I don't know what's happening to this country. We had a complete anti-American give Congress last week the opening ceremonies. Now, this Muslim society is American Society of Philadelphia. They have 40, they're in 40 mosques teaching children, teaching children these, these terrible things. Right under our noses, this is going on. Look what's happening to our country. We got un-American, anti-Semitic, racist people in Congress and in, in this very state. We had that anti-Christian woman from Philadelphia, Harold, I think her name is. The, city, the, the country's going to pot, you know. It's, I talk to some veterans now and then at, at the Taurus Club, and so many of them are just so disappointed that they, they fought for a country that, that it, we're allowing people to just, just destroy it, destroy it at the, at the very, everywhere, everywhere. I know I'm not, I'm off the subject so, but this is heartbreaking to, to see little children like this singing in our country and being allowed to get away with it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oman. Ed Klonecki. Good evening, my name is Ed Kalanicki, and I have a few homes throughout the Scranton area, and I pay my registration fees, I pay my garbage fees. We have a house over by one of my apartments, and it's owned by Lori and Michael Esposito. It's at 425, 427, and 429. It's actually 
a rear apartment too at 427 St. Francis Cabrini Street. I've been having problems with this lady for quite some time. When the Espositos did own it, Michael, which was his, you know, the husband of Lori, they, the Espositos took really good care of the property. Now, with, since the passing of her husband, it's just a mess. Like they've taken up bathrooms and left the toilet in the middle of the yard. I've called, complained. Now they've taken and put it against the fence in the back and I have called the city. They've came out, they've cited her. She hasn't paid the fines. Um, now it's in the back against the fence that's resting against one of my apartment buildings. Uh, they moved to Binghamton, New York quite some time ago. Their taxes are current right now, city and county. But the garbage fee isn't. She's about four to five years behind, about $5,000. She has no manager for the property, and being an absentee landlord, I was under the impression that you had to have a manager for the property. She hasn't had one, they don't have one. I was here today downstairs, and there is nobody on record for that. They went out many times, the cops have been there many times, the place caught on fire, and it was the porch, they took care of it, I guess they cleaned it up, and. I guess they, they moved back in. Uh, I, got, I was told yesterday that they had um, had a problem in the basement and they were running sewage out into the yard. Um, in addition to that, the house is low. I have a five foot fence between our house and theirs. The kids are going out on the roof and they're jumping off into the yard. Uh, there's a senior age lady that lives in my apartment. She had asked them to stop, and she's not well, and they decided to curse at her. In addition to that, they did about 10000 a little over $10,000 worth of damage by shooting BBs into the house and breaking the siding. I've called many times. I've said, like, why haven't they done anything because they need a manager for these properties? And I was told that there isn't enough people or enough money to enforce, you know, the fact that there's no managers in, like, it's not, it's not enforced. Uh, I've made many calls to her in New York, still haven't had any calls back, and this is years. The cops have been called a number of times because of trouble in the apartment, and there's two front apartments that haven't been lived in in quite some time. And how many units are occupied? Uh, there's one unit in the back, and it's a home, and there's two units up front. So the ones in and front are vacant, and the one in the back is occupied? Yeah, the one oh. in the back is occupied. Okay. It's been nothing but trouble. She doesn't care. She don't live here. She don't care. Mm -hmm. Wayne, it's pretty bad. Yeah, no, that, that yeah. sounds too horrible. I, I had to install cameras. I, I mean, I just don't know what to do at this point, and I think the city's hands are tied. I don't know why. But the bottom line is, is that everybody in this neighborhood has, have had, has had problems with them. If there's another avenue I could take, please point me in that direction. I'll be more than happy to do it. Well, let us find out what's going on with license inspection as far as what they've done, where they're at. You know, we'll get a report back to you. Um, I think I still have your number. If not, we'll, we'll get your contact information. All right. And see where we're at. All right. Thank you. But yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Good evening, council. Dave Dobson, resident, taxes paid. Um, that was a little somewhat unnerving what Joan mentioned about that RFP or whatever you would want to call it in the paper. I would hope that we apply promptly for the grant to restore City Hall and forget that nonsense. And that's all I have to say on the matter. I will not ever vote for anybody that thinks that City Hall is unimportant as a building. 
I don't have to vote for anybody. I can show up and vote none of the above. I've done that when I considered somebody unsuitable for public office and there is no alternative. Uh, or the alternative was worse than the person that I already considered unsuitable. So keep it in mind, there's a few votes come my way. Uh, people ask me what I think. Um, once again on the recycle, uh, we have to start enforcing the ordinance to force people to recycle so they can have two cans of recycle or uh, five bags of garbage, or five bags of trash. It's just, we, we develop a system, we put legislation, and I, I mean, this is years old, and nobody has ever really tried to enforce the recycling. Uh, uh, same with the uh, trash fees. It just keeps building up and up and up. I presume that they can't collect from 2011 on back because it's just been let go too long. And furthermore, if you get an older person that winds up in a nursing home or something, I, I'm probably safe in saying that if they wind up with a, uh, a lien from Medicaid after 100 days in the hospital or a lien from the uh, nursing home, uh, if they don't have the 20% insurance for the 100 days, the first 100 days, then the house gets uh, liqui li liquidated and those bills are paid. I inherited a house up in Elmhurst a couple of years ago. Only one problem, Medicaid took it all. <laughs> there wasn't anything left. And I have paperwork from the Department of Welfare stating that this person, uh, that we met all the requirements we sold the house for and put it in an escrow. And, but if there were any other claims at that time, it could, they could have been potentially collected then. And uh, the tax delinquent, once again, I mean, Chris Kelly's been having quite a few things in the paper about it. Uh, our agent Bond, uh, that's, that's insufferable. And, and uh, we need to, with the rental registration, get some teeth into failure to register. Uh, I know you're up against all of these people, but I will pledge my vote to people that try and straighten what I forementioned. And uh, I noticed that uh, Comcast came up with some money, $200,000. I hope ECTV gets their fair share. You know, sometimes in the city, and this is totally unrelated, or somewhat. Uh, I was sitting with Mike Giannetta at Giannetta Music one day, and he called Scranton School District about a $26,000 bill, I think it was. He delivered the musical equipment and merchandise before September, and uh, he's calling about his bill in May about this time of the year, and he got a so what? You know, well, if I go in there, then that means that because he has $26,000 tied up with the so what attitude, you know, I, uh, I have to pay more, right? He has to stay in business. Basically, he's out of business, so. That's the way it is. Thank you and have a good night. Uh, Marie Schumacher, uh, is there a status report on the uh, list of uh, exit plan recommendations available? Has anybody even looked at it? 
Uh, I looked at it. Uh, there, there's no, I, we don't have a status update. Um, like I said previously, I'd sent a letter asking for basically the same thing you're asking for. Um, but I, I mentioned last week about inviting Pell into a public caucus to have those uh, questions answered. But if, I mean, maybe a, uh, an idea is to send that to them in advance and have them uh, fill that out in the administration. Well, well, shouldn't council know what has been done, though? I mean, yeah, is that's that why, up to that's, Pell? That's, those are action items. Those right. That, right. That's why I asked. Uh, I, I think we're going to forward this to the administration and ask them to give us a status update. Okay. Okay. Is there a, has Pell received that? Uh, no. Oh. Not yet. Do they still meet with them on Mondays? Yes, each Monday, yeah. Uh, Councilman Evans and Donnie who do. Could one be given to them next Monday? We're not having, they're not going to be there next Monday because of uh, another uh, commitment they have, but we'll give it to them anyway. We'll get it to them either way. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, this announcement that was in city, on City Hall reuse uh, ideas, I was under the impression that much of the outdoor, the exterior work needs to be done before a year. Uh, was I incorrect in that, or? Well, I'm not sure if there's a time frame on it, but the clock is certainly ticking. Yeah, it has to get done quickly and should be done first. I'm not sure if there was a year time frame on that or not. Is there going to be a, an, an RFP put out to get that done? this year or what I, is the timeline I, for well, that to I happen? I expect that to happen this year. I would, absolutely, yeah. We're, we're going through this process of the request for ideas that you saw on the paper to see if there's anybody out there that's interested. We don't expect anybody to be interested at the level that we think we could actually do anything with it. So you're gonna wait for that before well, you, be, yeah. you get quotes for the doing this exterior work that needs to be done? Well, I'll check with Mr. Bozzoni, but I think we could uh, move on the exterior quotes, especially. Yeah, I, yeah. I know. I mean, there's yeah. obviously much to be done. I yep. went in the second floor uh, a, a refreshment room or where the- Which one? <laughs> the vending machines uh, are at the five hour marathon last Wednesday yeah. of the zoning meeting and uh, it's there were buckets and there I were know. panels out. So uh, I just don't understand the timeline. I wish maybe you could have that worked out so we can all see what happens when and how much it's going to cost. I also think we have to wait and hear back from to see, from the state to see what kind of RAC fee funding we're going to get from that because we, we did approve that application about a month ago. So I think that goes into it too. When do they make those decisions? Is I, that with this year's I don't money? Know for, I don't know for sure. But I'll find out. But I think that will be a consideration too. Okay, that would be helpful. Oh, incidentally, congratulations! I see there's wedding bells in your future here. So congratulations on that. Uh, the two fire and uh, one each fire and police. Uh, um, Mr. Perry, did you find out what is in the contract for a, a fireman who? I mean, uh, a police. A first, well, first of all, the police who can't carry a gun for several years. Uh, how long will will he, he remain on the I didn't get any answers back yet from that so I don't have anything for you tonight okay and what has happened with the uh, the fire fighter that I, I haven't yet? gotten a response yet when was that when did that response go out if I or the letter I requesting I go out uh, I asked uh, in person last week oh. and I haven't gotten anything back yet okay well uh, how much do we receive in rental registration revenue each year or is it actually yeah, it's been it's been a while and it's been through many changes since I've gone through the whole thing but is that uh, registration one and done or is that an annual cost? It's, it's, it's 45 hours per unit annually so it is a, an yes. so what what uh, what's in the budget this year for that? I, I'd have to check. I know that we were putting them until the settlement was happened. We were putting that money into an escrow account all along, and now they're putting it back into the general fund. But I'll find out for you. Okay, because and is there a timeline? For instance, I I, I mean I, I had a hard time believing that the Treasury Department didn't know that a house, a condemned house, had been torn down. Do they is 
doesn't that paperwork have a, is there a flow chart of what happens? I know there's paperwork goes along with, with that was, demolitions. That was definitely a systemic breakdown. There's no doubt about that. There's no excuse for that. I'm not sure what the process is, but there's no excuse when a building is not, is building torn down that the treasurer's office is not notified. Okay, and may I ask one quick question of ESR? Will there be any uh, L, um, lap pools, outdoor lap pools available for adult swimming in the city this summer? Uh, well, you don't quite yes, classify. Yes or no? Well, Say what? I thought the one in Neog had that area where the, even where the slides are, I thought it was an area for outdoor adult swimming. That's not true. You know, the Neog pool. Not the one that's closed, but the other pool. There are two uh, pools there. Th well, that was said it was for children. Well, that's where the slide is, but to, to the okay. right of that, there's quite a bit of space. I thought the adults would be there. But that would be the only area? Uh, unless Connell Park is open. I haven't heard yet. Well, it'd be nice to hear that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Perry, do you have any motions or comments? Uh, yeah, yeah, just quickly. Uh, recently, there's been some, you know, discussion about uh, our blight in our communities. And, you know, Ed was up here speaking. And, and you know, unfortunately, his story is, is not all that unique about issues that we have. And our, you know, sometimes our license and inspection department takes, takes the brunt of it. Uh, there is more work that can be done by that department but there is some help i think we should be able to, to give them to perform their job uh you know to the suggestions that i have uh one thing that i think is more immediate of a of a helping hand for them to help uh get out there and get some things done i think utilizing our internship department in that department first would be i think a priority uh, maybe we would be able to shift some of the uh, clerical and data entry uh, daily duties to more of an intern position and shift the responsibilities of our licensing and department uh, licensing inspection department uh, employees to more field work more active uh, work and getting out there and, and handling citizens issues and uh, issues that are facing the city I think that would be one of the more immediate things uh, I'm also not in favor about in it increasing the number of employees in that department uh, you know a lot of times when we talk about our budget and trimming our budget and cutting the budget well cutting the budget comes at a cost you know there's always a cost and there's always an, a, a second side uh, to everything that we do and and one of the cost cutting thing it looks good on the budget and paper when we when we uh, ratify it but what we don't see is the down the road cost and the erosion of a certain department or an agency and what that does to the long-term uh, effectiveness of that department and what that uh, long-term uh, lack of effectiveness does to the actual communities and cities. So I think reinvesting in that department you know, would be something that, that in certain ways I'd be f in favor for. Uh, one of the ways I would be in favor reinvesting in that department would be if the city council had control over the job description of the created position. I think that's something that if uh, the five of us was to collaborate on and, and dictate what that job should be, I think we would be able to get a good grasp on it because honestly, uh, you know, we hear most of these complaints on a, on a weekly basis, daily basis, whether it's uh, getting emails or text or just being out in the street. Uh, you know, we, we, hear, we hear what's going on and, and, and we're not happy with it. And I think that, you know, our collaboration would make a pretty good job description for creating a new position in that department. And I think that department uh, position should include uh, a certain amount of field work, which would be the majority of the time in the field, because uh, that's where that's where the work is needed right now. Uh, I also think the position should be done on a on a rotating schedule, days, nights, and weekends. Uh, a lot of times things happen over the weekend when employees aren't working. A lot of times things happen in the evening when employees aren't scheduled to work. And I think a position uh, that should be invested in should require a certain amount of flexibility within their hours uh, to capture more of a cross section of what's happening within our city. Uh, so I'll leave that at that uh, for right now. That's some of where my head's at with the department and, and some of the things that I think we can do to support that department to do a better job. Uh, and, and secondly, uh, you know, it would be remiss for me not to, to discuss uh, the Castle incident that happened and the unfortunate tragedy uh, that is. And I know we're going to have some more councilmen talk more heavily on this uh, in a minute, uh, but I, I agree with, with just about all the sentiment going on right now. Uh, to me, this business does not 
and should not be allowed to operate, and it should not be allowed to operate any further. Uh, how long do we get punched in the eye by this business? How long do we have to put up with this? What more needs to happen for us to take a strong stance and say this type of behavior and this type of operations is not allowed in the city of Scranton without us not taking action? How long? We're, we're, we're well past that point. And, uh, it, it just won't go on any longer. This is something that we just make, make, to make, make it, we need to make a stand up. Uh, so with that, I will let it go and I have no further business for tonight. Thank you. Councilman Donahue, any motions or comments? Uh, yes, uh, just first off, uh, I'm still waiting for a response for my request for the emergency management plan. Uh, Chief DeSarno did re reach out this week and said he is working on getting that to me. I'm still waiting for showmobile invoices I'm still waiting for a copy of the, of, a de, of the denial letter from the insurance company regarding the federal civil rights suit settlement regarding Mr. Hinton. And I'm also waiting for a breakdown of Northeast Revenue, the fees that Northeast Revenue charges for delinquent uh, garbage collection. I'm also still in the process of reviewing the documents provided by license inspection regarding PSN properties owned by Mr. Bond. Uh, my goal in going through them is to try to identify where the system broke down and to try to come up with legislative solutions to address them. But the problem is even if we develop the best possible legislative solution, the administration still must enforce that legislation. As we saw this morning with reg registration in the article in this paper, uh, even common sense legislation becomes basically useless when it isn't being enforced. Uh, the only way we're going to solve the many issues we face is by solving them together. Not one person up here and not even the mayor can move the city forward on our own. And we have to start doing it together. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Evans, any motions or comments? Uh, briefly, uh, one week from tomorrow is primary election day. So first I would urge every registered voter to participate in this very important and very simple act. Voting is the keystone of our democratic republic. And it has been repeated many times, if you do not vote, you will most likely get the government that you deserve. It seems, though, that some candidates or elected officials have taken the path of partisan ide ideology. They have forgotten what it would mean to be a candidate or an elected official. If you are lucky enough to be elected when you, when you are elected, you are there to serve the people, all of the people, and to effect positive change for everyone. But most of all, you're there to govern. So I would ask again, eight days from the primary election, that you get out to vote, and when you cast your vote, when you exercise that very important right, that you choose candidates based not only on their qualifications, but on their ability to actually govern. What we need now are leaders who truly understand that governing means uniting individuals and building coalitions, not creating more division. We need less partisanship and divisiveness. We need leaders who will use sound discretion and good judgment in their decision-making capacity and will not be influenced by opinion polls, ideology, and outside influences. So again, what I'm asking of you, the voters, is to be informed and educated and vigilant with your vote. And if you are, you just might actually get the government you really deserve. And finally, every day is your chance to make this city a little better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gaughan. Any motions or comments? Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion uh, that Scranton City Council send a letter to the district attorney requesting that his office review any and all relevant information, including police calls and incidents at the Castle Club on North Main Avenue in North Scranton, and consider shutting the establishment down in the interest of public safety. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. I spoke to uh, both Chief Graziano and uh, the district attorney, Mark Powell, uh, earlier this afternoon. Um, you know, in my conversation with Chief Graziano, it's, it's very clear that this area has become a very uh, a danger, it's just dangerous. Um, so I, we're putting our police men and women in harm's way consistently. Um, I know in talking to Chief Graziano, there have been numerous, uh, over the you know, years, there's been numerous police calls and uh, incidents uh, at the uh, Castle Club and in that vicinity. Um, I'm not exactly sure with the recent shooting if that had anything to do with the, the club, um, but I do know that the residents of North Scranton are tired of it. Um, there are 
very good establishments in that area that is a nice area until you get down in that block and then it becomes like I said very dangerous so uh, I would hope that and I know that my because we've already talked about it my colleagues would agree to send a letter to Mr. Powell um, asking him to consider after reviewing all the relevant information and the police calls and incidents to shut this establishment down similar to uh, what he did at Rocky's Lounge. Um, I, as I said, I did have a chance to speak to Mr. Uh, District Attorney Powell, and he uh, did inform me that right now they are conducting the investigation, but he would uh, entertain our request. Um, just, just to follow up on that, if, and if everyone's in agreement, if we could also add to one of the problems that we're having with this situation, and, and I appreciate the District Attorney's work, what was done with Rockies, it was certainly the right thing to do. And now we have an issue at the Castle, which has been ongoing in North Scranton. My concern is, obviously, first and foremost, for the residents in, in North Scranton and the Castle area, and I know I talked to some of my colleagues already about this. I know I talked to Councilman Perry and uh, Evans. One of the problems that keeps happening, shutting down a bar, this needs to happen. But the problem is the same group of thugs are going from bar to bar to bar. So when the Castle shut down, and it should be, they're going to go somewhere else. You know, we had it on Southside with Finn McCool's. Then it was Rockies. Now it's the castle. So obviously the castle right now is the biggest problem. It needs to be shut down. Um, but I think we need to have more communication and be able to find these issues before it gets to the point of a murder. You know, there are problem bars in the city. Everyone knows who they are, where they are. Um, after this club is closed, and I hope it is closed, the same group is not going to just disappear. They're going to go to another location. Um, so I think we need to be proactive on working, and, and I know the chief has a log of calls by bar. So I think by looking at those facilities that are already somewhat problematic, they're the ones where this group is going to go to. Um, so I think there also has to be a proactive approach um, as well. Um, but I, I fully agree with the motion um, to you know, to, to have the, the DA shut this one down. And the only thing I would add to that, too, is, uh, and I agree with Councilman Rogan, um, and I think uh, in the caucus we asked Solicitor Menorah just to research if there's any legislative remedies. I think this club uh, can stay open until 6 in the morning. I don't think they sell alcohol, but you're allowed to bring it in. So, um, Solicitor Menorah, when you have a chance just to research that, if there's anything we can do maybe to uh, gain more control over establishments like this that are open so late. And that's all I have. Yeah. Thanks. On the question, I, I totally agree with that. If there's legislative answers to this problem, then we need to act. That's our responsibility. So we need to find that out, and hopefully we'll get some kind of response because these bottle clubs are notorious all over the state. And uh, if we need to address that and there's some way we can do it, even outside of state law, then we should make an effort to do it. We can't sit on the sidelines anymore. You know, this type of behavior can't go on. I mean, these are our friends. These are our neighbors. You know, this is our city. This is ridiculous. So they all deserve better. We deserve better. And let's hope we can put this to rest. We look forward to working with the DA's office and the chief of police as well. And uh, we're 100% behind the neighbors on this particular issue. This has gone on for probably at least a decade, and it has to stop. And on the question, uh, Attorney Menor, now, if I'm correct, we're allowed to, we can't go any looser than a state regulation, but we can get more stringent. We can, can we pinpoint that down and, and regulate that even harder under the umbrella that the state provides us if we choose to? I'd like to look into it before I answer that, okay. but there's a possibility. There's already <clears throat> several nuisance statutes on the books on the state level, both in the crimes code and in the real estate code uh, that are enforceable by the district attorney's office. So I think I'd want to talk to them and see if they felt they needed more legislation, mm -hmm. number one, and number two, whether or not we legally can. Right. So I, I'll look into that. Yeah, and I mean, I don't want to speak for the rest of us, but I think we're interested in something more of an inclusive bottle club legislation where we don't want to, we don't want to just kind of cinch this hole and then have it respring somewhere else. You know, we would like to, you know, just kind of eliminate or at least re-regulate that type of bottle club uh, legislation so it's not so loose and, and overnight type of business, which usually is where, as Councilman Rogue would say, probably the next problem would turn up. Okay, I can look into that. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? 
The ayes have it and so ordered. And just uh, last item for tonight, uh, last week I showed the picture of the gentleman standing in the hole at uh, 1452 West Locust Street. I uh, spoke to Mr. Gallagher, the DPW acted uh, really quickly, so I have to thank them for that. Uh, they did put, at this point, a metal plate uh, over the hole uh, for safety reasons, obviously. Um, Mr. Gallagher explained to me that the hole is the result of a rotted out storm drain. Uh, so within a month's time frame, the DPW does have plans to remove the plate, fill the hole, and take care of that issue. So, um, And then I also would ask that uh, if it's possible to fix some of the sidewalk that has crumbled because of the hole. And that's all for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Just three quick points. Uh, one I forgot to mention at the top of the meeting, we did have an executive session prior to our meeting tonight to discuss a matter of litigation. Um, two other quick items, and I know we already talked about this at length, um, the Castle Nightclub. Um, one of the, the biggest benefit the city of Scranton has always had going for us compared to neighboring cities, Wilkes-Barre, Hazleton, um, other cities you see in the news is how, how safe we are. And that's a testament to the work that, that our police put in. Um, but it is very disturbing to see incidents like this at the castle. And like I said, it's, it's, th there's always a problem bar. Like I said, it was you know, Finn McCool's, it was Rockies. You know, there's been other ones through the years. Uh, the Bill Cherie in Westside when I was growing up, which is now a great, you know, great establishment. Um, th there's always gonna be a place. And in most of these instances, they're not people from Scranton that are committing these acts. In this case, it may have been, may have been the case, but many times it's people from New York, New Jersey. Um, it's typically not lifelong Scranton residents that are, um, you know, are committing these crimes. But I fully agree with, with the action we took tonight, but we do need to be more stringent overall on, on bars. And as I mentioned, it's the same, you know, it's the same group over and over. Just because the bar closes doesn't mean the people that are there dealing drugs, you know, crime, they're going to go somewhere else. And you know, we, we have to try to stay one step ahead. And the people in the neighborhood know. I know we've all received emails about the castle previously. Um, it's never gotten to this level. Um, but really, it's that, it's that same group of, and I call them thugs, over and over and over again. And, and they have rap sheets this long. Um, so hopefully we could come up with a better policy to address um, not only these bottle clubs, but problem bars as well. Cause some of them are at establishments that serve alcohol just like a regular bar. This one really takes it to a, an extreme when people are there uh, five, six in the morning. And finally, to end on a positive note, um, on Sunday, had the opportunity to go to the uh, aquarium down at the Steamtown Mall. Um, I'm not a shopper, so I don't frequent the malls often. Um, but I will say I was very impressed, not only with, with the aquarium, going with my wife and our daughter, but just walking around the mall, and it really is starting to come back. Um, it was very nice to see the amount of people that were there, and I understand it was Mother's Day, so it may have been a little bit busier than normal. Um, but it was, it was very good to see the amount of activity going on in the mall, the amount of people, um, especially in the marketplace section, some small, um, you know, little small mom and pop restaurants, all different types of cuisine, Asian, barbecue, uh, American pizza, cookie stands. Um, I, I have to say, and I'm ashamed to say I haven't been in the mall in quite a while, um, but it was, it was a very good experience. And if you haven't been in the mall in a year or so, uh, take, take a walk through on the weekend. That's all. Thank you. 5B for introduction and ordinance approving the transfer of a restaurant liquor license owned by RDRM Incorporated, HC2, Box 177, Thornhurst Township, Thornhurst, PA, 18424-0177, license number R16828, to Giant Food Stores, LLC, for use at 1600 Neog Avenue, Lackawanna County, Scranton, PA, 18509, as required by the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board. This time I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C for introduction and ordinance authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept on behalf of the city of Scranton this quit claim deed conveying title to the city of Scranton, the property formerly owned by the Lackawanna County Land Bank known as 100 Block Kaiser Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, 
as more fully described in Exhibit A attached here to and made a part hereof. This time we'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Uh, yes, on the question. Um, well, first of all, this is a much needed project. Uh, every time it rains and you drive by the uh, Kaiser Valley Community Center, it's basically um, the parking lot's underwater. Um, so I fully support this project. The only two questions I have is it says the, um, the Kaiser Valley Community Center has received grant funding, and then it says, whereas if funded, this project will correct severe drainage. So before final passage, if we could just find out um, what grant did the Kaiser Valley Community Center receive? How much was it for? Um, and then maybe we could have a conversation with the city solicitor next week just about the whole process of the city now taking this land. I, I don't quite understand how that works. But I, uh, once that's cleared up, I am in favor of the, the overall project. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, no business at this time. Seventh order, 7A, no business at this time. If there's no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.